I didn't expect such a big crowd at the hearing. Hmm. Sh should I take the stand myself? What do you think, little kitty? Ah, maybe we can do a little show of, um, paws. Raise your left paw if you think I should testify, or your right paw if... W wait! You raised your left paw before I even finished my sentence. No, that doesn't count. Let's try again. Okay, if you raise your right paw, I'll let someone else handle it. Hmm. Right paw, huh? Well, I did actually want to tell everyone the truth myself. Let's give this another shot. Miss Jiajie, the hearing is about to start. If you would please join us. Now? Y yes, Madame Juyo. I I'll be there in a minute. Oh, Rover! Oh, you're here. It's, it's really nice to see you. And I appreciate you coming. I just handed over all the evidence we gathered from Mingyang's studio and the Exiles' camp to the patrollers. Now the Shangyun Art Exchange can't deny the fact they were producing and trading art forgeries. <sighs> but there is one more thing. The patroller said we still need someone to testify in the hearing. You're really kind, but, um... I'll be fine to do this myself. You've already helped me so much. Even just having you here is a huge relief. Some things I've got to face on my own. That said, I uh, didn't didn't expect there would be so many spectators coming to watch. If I get nervous and mess up any details, could you please help to remind me? Thank you. Having you here helps, more than you know. It's about time. We should probably go in, huh? With both parties present, this hearing is now in session. Let us begin. First, a brief overview of the case before us. Miss Jiajie alleges that the guilty party, Ming Yan, implicated in the tacit discord assault, was coerced into committing art fraud under duress. Therefore, her mental state was adversely affected, which led to her committing actions contrary to her will. Today, based on new evidence provided by Miss Jiajie and the result of this hearing, we will determine whether to revisit Ming Yan's charges and consider if the Shangyun Art Exchange is indeed guilty of selling illegal art forgeries. What? With all due respect, this doesn't match what we discussed before. Mr. Beitze, I remind you that any evidence or arguments presented before and during the hearing are valid. If you would like to add further information, you're welcome to do so at any point. Now, without further ado, either party may begin their opening statement. Madame Julia, the, the situation is... Madam Juya, as the head of the Shanyuan Art Exchange, I, Baitsa, must clear our name and seek justice here today. There are two points I'd like to address. Firstly, the authenticity of our artworks remains unimpeachable. Secondly, Ming Yan's provocative creations stem solely from her own greed and vanity. She alone should bear responsibility for the assault. Throughout my tenure at the Art Exchange, our foremost principle has been that of integrity, a well-known fact. And yet, 
Integrity in business is not enough to stave off discord. We are aware of certain painters rejected by the art exchange, nursing grudges and resorting to threats. They bombarded us with spite and slander, causing a public uproar simply because they didn't get what they wanted. Should the public be swayed by these slanderous insinuations that paint us as wicked fraudsters, then I'm afraid justice will never be served. Please control yourself, Mr. Beitzer. <sighs> Forgive me, madam. But if this injustice persists, I will have no choice but to sue them for harming the Shan Yu and Art Exchange's reputation. They have damaged the trust we built with our clients. I demand they compensate us for our losses and issue a public apology. Such disgraceful behavior will not diminish us. Our principles will not waver, and we will protect the Shan Yuan Art Exchange from any ill intent. Uh. I've bought paintings from Shan Yuan Art Exchange before. They were good quality, and their service was decent. Hard to believe they'd be involved in something like this. Honest, always get the short end of the stick. But who's Ming Yan? A painter? Never heard of him. <sighs> Must be some nobody trying to get attention using the Shan Yuan's name. Why is the art exchange always in the middle of some controversy? Order! Order! You may continue your statement. I... Uh. Madam, allow us to present our account of the events. This all really began three days ago. I was entrusted to investigate a certain arcane artist in the Tiger's Maw. Took you long enough to get here. <laughs> Things are getting awfully strange around the mine lately. Figured you're just the one to untangle this mess. With your knack for solving mysteries, you'll figure this out in no time. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there's a special folktale in Jinjo. Word has it, there's this mysterious arcane artist whose paintings come to life as they paint, as if each brushstroke has a life of its own. Once their canvas dries, whatever they've painted leaps right off the page. Mythical creatures, the whole shebang, all real as day. The thing is, anyone who might have seen these paintings, well, they vanish into thin air. I've never heard of such a unique forte. Lately, I've been receiving reports about eerie monsters wandering the mine at midnight. Some witnesses even ran into them more than once. These monsters, they look like paintings from a distance, but approach them and they're as docile as can be. Reading these reports, I couldn't shake the tale of the arcane artist from my mind. Sure, some say it's just a prank or some new tacit discord variant. But with rumors swirling, folks are getting jittery. Can't let things escalate. That's why I reached out to you. Great. Counting on you to crack this case wide open. Oh, and you might want to chat up the witnesses. Got their names right here for you. Ah, oh, that's it for today. 
time for a break. Oh, hey there. Need something? Oh, you've come to the right guy. I was actually the first to see those weird things. I was playing chess with the old miners until midnight, then headed home alone. On my way back, I heard these strange moans like some kind of monster was out there. At first I thought they were tacit discords and I was ready to bolt. But then I realized they were different. These monsters, they were being drawn to something. Curiosity got the better of me, so I took a step closer and saw that they had these strange features, gleaming eyes, gnarled horns, and dark green bodies covered in slimy liquid. Do you think they're related? Did Goupon tell you about that old folktale? You know, I did see some people standing nearby. Just some shadows, really, because it was so dim. Well, the light was flickering in the wind, so I couldn't make out their faces. But I knew something was weird with the scrolls they had in their hands. Every time they moved, more monsters appeared. Later, I told everyone about it, and Gupon was there. She freaked out, saying it was just like the tale of the arcane artist. I I'm not sure, but I overheard them talking. No, actually, arguing would be more accurate. Anyway, I got worried those monsters might attack me, so I bolted and didn't catch what they were arguing about. I do remember. Wait, you're not seriously thinking of going there, are you? Whatever those monsters are, they're unidentified and dangerous. If you have to go, be really careful, all right? <sighs> Settle. Look like you work at the mine. Can I help you with something? Oh yes, that strange event. It's the talk of the town right now. I've conducted several investigations and found that those monsters tend to appear around midnight. Their locations seem random though. Fortunately, they haven't caused much harm. I think it's because they always show up and vanish in the dead of night. If you ask me, these monsters are a new type of tacit discord. Since they're unrecorded, our terminal can't trigger an alarm when they're nearby. For safety reasons, we have increased our patrols around the mine. Anything else unusual? Hmm. Yes, there was one thing. Aside from the blurred silhouettes I saw that night, I remember hearing voices. Like people talking. The voices came from where those silhouettes were, but they sounded like vague muttering. Thinking about it now, if it was a human voice, how could someone get so close to those monsters without crying out for help? I've gathered enough information. It's time to check the scene where those monsters were spotted. <sighs> There's... something ahead. That figure. That paintbrush. Could it be... Nothing here. Huh. That's odd. Did I just imagine that?
R Rover! You're here! Sorry, did I scare you just now? Finding inspiration. The night often sparks my creativity. Of course not! I... I heard about the tale of the arcane artist and hoped to find out who they are. Sorry I lied to you. I just... I didn't want to drag anyone else into this. Bringing painted creatures to life, making fantasies real. It sounds like a fairy tale, but when the arcane artist first caught people's attention in Jinjo years ago, it was more than just a tale. Now this story is making the rounds again. Most don't see the dangers it holds. As someone who feels the threat, I... I want to uncover the truth before it's too late. Yes, there was once an artist who could create paintings that felt so real, you could almost step into them. But these paintings, they strayed from the artist's original intentions and caused a lot of trouble. I don't know who's behind these latest events, but if it's really the arcane artist, their paintings will bring nothing but trouble. That that's why I, I have to stop them to prevent the past from repeating itself. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at investigating, so I haven't found any major clues yet. I'm here for the arcane artist, but also hoping to meet an old acquaintance. Maybe he knows what happened in the mine. Is that so? Oh, uh, okay. Hey, Jija. Long time no see. You need more pigments already? N no not yet. And this must be the rover. Nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Didn't realize you and Jujin knew each other. But I've never had the chance to introduce myself properly. A great moment for it. Here's the thing, Rover. I can't say I know Jujur very well, but I do know she's got this quirk where her courage tends to crumble right when it's crunch time. So, when it comes to introducing herself to you, I'd bet money on it. She's been mentally rehearsing it for forever before she got the guts to take action. No, it's not like that. Judge, you can't keep avoiding things. You've got to take action, or you'll never get what you want. You only live once, right? Yes, Mr. Shilang is right. Rover, I've actually been meaning to tell you something. Hello, my name is Zhe Zhi. We have met before, but I'd like to make this a formal request. I would really like for us to become friends. Of course, I'd be happy to. Hello, Zhe Zhe. Hey, what are you waiting for? I, um, okay, I can do this. Um, Robert.
was a pretty obvious slip of the tongue. <clears throat> nice to meet you. My name is Zhe Zhi. I'm a, a painter. I take art commissions and strive to create beautiful paintings. I... I'm not being very articulate. But, but I hope we can be friends. Sweet. I must say, I've never seen Judge this nervous since she first became one of my cherished patrons. Well, wait, Mr. Shilang. We're actually here today to talk about the tale of the arcane artist. Oh, I know the tale, but I've never come across this mystical maestro myself. If such an artist truly existed, I'd be the first to know without a doubt. I supply ore to pigment manufacturers and sometimes serve as their sales proxy. So most painters in Jinjo come to my shop to buy pigments. Hmm, well, pigments aren't flying off the shelves these days. Just a few regulars, you know? Oh, but those ore buyers from a while back, they seemed a bit suspicious. They bought heaps of leftover ore, the cheapest type, and told me not to let anyone know they got the ore here. People don't usually buy that stuff. Oh, wait. Jiji, didn't you buy some once? A long time ago, right? I remember you saying you couldn't afford the fancy pigments, so you made your own. That stuck with me. So when those guys asked for leftovers, I paid extra attention. Are you sure you can tell us this? I thought they asked you to keep it a secret. <laughs> they turned out to be thieves who stole from me during the night. But when I found out, I reported the theft to the patrollers, and that was the end of it. Thieves don't deserve my business or respect. Of course, help yourself. If this is the situation... Hey! Rover! What brings you here? It's been ages since we last met. The patrol station's been pretty busy lately, so I haven't had the time to catch up with you. And Chich is here too! Hiya! Do you remember me? We met at the Moon Chasing Festival. Oh, are you all right? You don't look well. Do you need help? Hello? No, it's not. Uh, no, thank you. The painting we had you do for us during the festival is awesome. Everyone loves it, so we put it up on the wall. Really? <laughs> I'm glad you all like it. We'd also like to invite you to our station, so we can formally thank you in person. Wait, how about coming to the station with me today? Are you heading back to the city? Uh, but we're still investi- I... Uh, okay. You 
investigate? About what? A new case? Oh, I get it. In that case, it's probably not the best time for a get-together. Sorry. That's okay. Now just tell me if you need any help. the patrollers. There was an assault near the mine recently, and they're short on people to investigate. What's odd is those monsters haven't caused any more trouble since we got here. Right now, we're talking to witnesses and trying to figure out what triggered the incident. Did something just happen over there? Don't tell me it's a tacit discord. Hold on, just got a message. Seems like they really are stirring up trouble again. Sorry, but I gotta go check this out. Sh should we go as well? You could be right, but there's one other thing. After Rover and I bumped into each other, we decided to investigate the surroundings and follow Patroller Chisha to the scene of the incident. It was there we learned about the details of Mingyan's offense and the truth behind the tale of the arcane artist. Once Juju has the paintbrush in her hand, she begins to speak calmly. She'll be fine making the statement on her own now. to trouble you. If I had been clearer, you wouldn't have had to explain things to Chisha for me. She's really nice. It's just, we're not that close, and I'm not sure how to respond to how friendly she is. I didn't want to be rude, so I, I couldn't bring myself to turn her down. I'll do my best not to trouble you and express my feelings properly next time. Thank you. Thanks for your help, Rover. We caught the culprit before anything worse could happen. We were lucky to have you here. According to the preliminary examination, we suspect that these tacit discords were agitated by the frequency fluctuations from a scroll painting found at the scene. The energy remaining in the painting was generated by its creator's forte, nearly overclocking. But rest assured, we've calmed her down and contained the energy. The painting needs to be thoroughly examined to identify its connection with the monsters and eliminate any potential risk it still poses. Thanks for all your help. We'll take it from here. She fessed up when I first started talking to her, but clammed up when I tried to dig deeper. Well, honestly, she seemed a bit off to me. But we don't have time for that now. We gotta clean up the scene and get the damage under control. You sure can.
why. Ming Yang? Why are you... Yes, we used to take painting lessons together. You! Uh, I... I... I didn't... I... Uh, I hurt them. It... It was a mistake. I... I'm alone. I wasn't hurt. It was so close. Part of it, I guess. I saw that painter. She looked like she was losing it. I'm talking shouting, waving her paintbrush around like she was sweeping the sky. I might be off here, but I swear those things on her scroll started squirming around before the whole swarm of monsters exploded out of thin air. They started to whack and thwack people all over the place. I was terrified and ran away as fast as my legs would take me. Not super clearly, but when I was running for my life, I heard her screaming at all those creatures, all like, Stop! Don't do this! I think she might have been trying to stop them from hurting people. Oh, my head. Oh, it hurts. Only a bit. It looked like she was arguing with someone right before the weird visions appeared. Uh, I heard stuff like, Don't stop me! I've, I've already won! And who doesn't want fame and fortune? Mm. That's a good thing they caught that painter. Can't imagine what could have happened otherwise. I've met my fair share of artists, but none that would gamble with lives for the sake of their work? Huh. That's a first for me. Mm. That's strange. Uh, oh, you're back. You figured it out already? The painting blurs the line between reality and illusion, causing whoever sees it to experience hallucinations. So, Mingyan channeled her forte into the painting, creating temporary phantasms. People saw her abilities and spread the rumor believing she was the arcane artist from the tale. The monsters described in the rumors were probably just exaggerated phantasms seen by scared people at night. In fact, I had sensed something odd at the mine, but after we met, I thought it was coming from you, so I didn't give it much attention. Come to think of it now, it might have been Ming Yan's forte fluctuation. So she was there at the same time we were. I didn't even notice her presence. But what could have driven her to create such dangerous paintings? From what I know of her, she doesn't seem like someone who would take such risks for personal gain. She kept squeezing my hand and trying to tell me something, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. I think she wants me to continue the investigation. Maybe there's more to this story than I thought. Besides, I don't recall her having a forte before. Maybe this has something to do with me. Huh? Uh, are you sure? 
I definitely won't say no to your help. Actually, I... I've wanted it since we last met at the mine. You want me to decide? To be honest, I haven't really thought it through. Hmm. I remember meeting Ming Yang in an art studio in Jinzhou before. I wonder if she kept going there after I left. Should that be our first stop? She may have left some of her artwork behind. That could be a good start. I've never tried to investigate anything, so I'm not sure if this is the way to go. Okay, let's go. After learning about the details of the assault, we decided to push forward with the investigation to get to the truth. Pointless! The witnesses on the scene made it clear that it was all because of Ming Yan's greedy ambition that she... I haven't finished my statement, Mr. Baizi. Yes, this is the art studio. My memory did serve me right. Looks like she's been painting here. Let's find the clues. Okay. This paper. This white jade paper has a rich history. Its smooth, fine texture holds ink beautifully. Exactly what you want for more delicate brushwork. Countless masterpieces, both old and new, were painted on this paper. Like Chinai's Voyage to Yum Mountain and Ealing's Chishi's Dawn of Spring, both two good examples. Whoops, I got carried away. Wait. There's a discount sticker on the wrapping, and it looks quite new. Yes, White Jade Hall runs a yearly sale. I attended it two days ago and bought paper with this same packaging. Ming Yang likely bought her paper there too. Half of the stock has already been used, which means she was painting day and night until the incident. Different papers result in different artistic effects. Real artists can always spot these differences and choose the right paper to showcase various styles. White jade paper is my absolute favorite, but because it's so expensive, I can only afford to buy it when there's a special sale. I can't pass up a great deal, so I stock up whenever I can. It usually takes a whole day to carry all the boxes home, but I must say, it's worth it. Buy three, get one free. Buy five, get two free. And then there's the additional weekly coupons. I know everything there is to know about the discounts. <laughs> we have the same painting style, and the quality of our finished works is remarkably similar. Even if we use different brush techniques, our similar styles mean we should finish a painting in about the same time. Once a painter holds a paintbrush in their hand, they won't stop until every detail meets their standards. It becomes an obsession. I guess this is true for most painters. There is a difference. The brushwork on this one, see how heavy it is? You can tell Ming Yang was in low spirits. And this one, the strokes are light and fluid. That tells me she was happy when she painted this. The feelings a painter has during the process of creation often linger in the brush strokes without them knowing. 
They're present in every line, even if the artist tries to hide it. Yes, to me, painting is like a window into the heart of the artist. When words fail, these feelings can be depicted through brushstrokes instead. Hmm. It is strange though. She keeps reproducing the same painting over and over, using techniques that aren't her usual style. Waters and mountains rest by the pain, valleys and peaks in the dream remain. Colors of vanity washed away. The painted world fades, forgotten today. This artwork is titled Serenity of Xiehua Village. It captures the scenic landscape seen from the village itself. Ah, the pigment! When did I get all my clothes? Huh? It came off with just a little white. Hmm, it shouldn't come off the fabric so easily. Like there's stains from ink and paint that have been washed out over time. Ming Yang could have improvised her clothing as a canvas for her ideas. I used to do this as well. Whenever nature inspired me and I was short on paper, I paint rough outlines onto my clothes. After all, fabric used to be a common art material. Besides, using clothes does help to cease fleeting inspiration, don't you think? It's a shame the clothes are stained forever, but it's worth it to see how different inks behave on fabric. How could this happen? That's why there are so many copies of the original artwork. But I have some other thoughts about it. Being picky about one's work is second nature to an artist. I'm no exception. There's never been a moment when I saw my art outshining someone else's. I've always admired my fellow artists, hoping that one day I could be as good as them, perhaps even surpass them. I kept painting and improving, but no matter how hard I tried, I always felt it wasn't good enough. <sighs> this needs to be refined. It's not quite there yet. Still short of perfect. Will my client be disappointed? I had these kind of thoughts every day while I painted. It started creeping into my daily life too. It's true that one might find motivation in these thoughts, but they can also lead one astray. I felt trapped for ages until I finally figured out the path I ought to follow. Embrace my emotions fully and create the art my heart yearns for. This is of the greatest importance to me. But if I found myself in the same situation as Ming Yang, perhaps, 
perhaps I'd react similarly and lose my way. She was forced into this and was looking for a way out. I can't just turn a blind eye and let them charge her. There must be a way to uncover the truth and save her. Hey, have a look at this. Seems like this pigment is homemade. But why are there herbs in it? Did she use a new recipe I'm not familiar with? Medicinal herb residue? She must have been making medicinal remedies recently. This must be the leftover residue she didn't get around to cleaning up. These herbs were used for medicine. Oh, so those plants I saw in the pharmacy weren't just for decoration. I've never tried myself. When I get sick, I usually just wait it out. My family always brought me remedies and soups. I never thought about how they were made. Sorry, I'm just not very experienced. I think, hmm, no, I might be wrong. Nothing, it's just a thought, I might be wrong. Then, I'll share it with you. The vase must have been on that cabinet, judging by where it fell. Looks like the cabinet used to be over there, but... Something bumped into it, and that's why the vase got knocked over. I bet the water on the floor is from the fishbowl. Huh. Well, why is that watermark in the shape of a gold puff? <gasps> okay, I figured it out. That must be the reason. Rover will definitely be impressed with my deductive skills. A gullpuff jumped out of the fishbowl, knocking over the vase and causing it to shatter on the floor. Then it landed on a pile of paintings. Realizing it was in trouble and afraid of getting scolded, it slipped out of the window. Ah, why wouldn't they? My family used to have an aquarium at home with lots of gullpuffs. I thought it was a popular trend. Sorry, I need to improve my investigation skills. Is that so? Uh, I'll practice more often. Oh yes, these are phantasms I can create with my brush. They only exist for a short while. I haven't done this for a long time. I'm a bit rusty now. Yes, I rarely need to use my forte in daily life. When it comes to painting, I prefer the traditional way. It helps me to understand my progress and improve my skills. An artwork created with Forte is indeed mesmerizing, nearly flawless, but that's not my goal. So I've used this ability less over time. But it's fine to use it for the investigation. Yes, it could be related to my Forte.
into the studio looking for something or trying to steal something probably something tied to Ming Yang's paintings however they were startled by something unexpected and in their panic to escape through the window collided with the cabinet causing the vase to fall this might be related to the Shang Yun art exchange and Ming Yan's breakdown but let's follow these tracks and see where they lead The clues from the studio led us to an exile's camp. There, we found new clues that pointed to a hidden player behind all of this. The trolley is worn. Maybe it carried something very heavy. Could it be they transported or made pigments from them and then moved the pigments elsewhere? Could the buyers Mr. Shilong mentioned be the ones who stole the ore? Scarlethorn, Indigoit, and other ore. These match the raw materials for pigments listed on Mr. Shilong's transaction record. I took a look and noticed that these pigments were handcrafted from these specific ores. Standard pigments adhere well and last a long time, but these makeshift pigments smear with the slightest touch. I did mention this back in the studio. When my clothes got stained by Ming Yang's pigments, did she buy these low-quality pigments from the exiles? But why did these people break into her studio? Who are you? Uh, uh, hello. Uh, we are... If it's her paintings you're after, why are you here? She... She wasn't in her studio, so we thought we could ask around. I see. Just wait for her here. When she leaves, it usually doesn't take long for her to return. Know her? We go way back. She's okay in our books, though she hasn't had the easiest run either. She helped us out a while back. Guess you could call us friends. She even gifted us a painting. It's somewhere around here. Oh, here it is. We're no fancy connoisseurs, but even we can tell that girl can paint. I kind of like it myself. It's lively, bright, almost like you could touch the freedom and joy she felt painting it. Can't recall anything noteworthy. My guess? She's dabbling in some new secretive art piece. I spotted her taking risky stabs at painting out in the wild. Well, now that you mention it, I do remember her talking about making art you could step into or whatever. But her little art excursion stirred up some unstable frequencies. We warned her, but did she listen? Nope. That's right, I saw her paintings myself. Tried to steer her clear and what do I get? 
a lecture. Artists, <laughs> always on their own wild wavelength, aren't they? Sorry to interrupt, but mind if I ask what you normally do for a living? Us? Oh, the usual. A bit of hunting, some gigs here and there. Just the everyday grind. No, not many jobs around. Just enough to scrape by. I have an idea. Yes, I think neither of these exiles nor Minion has told the truth. I noticed some of the exiles' hands were blackened. The thought suddenly hit me. What if it's from constant exposure to ink? If so, they must be making a lot of pigments and ink sticks. The painting they showed us and the artworks in the studio, they all match what Ming Yang described in her diary. Her diary shows us she had major mood swings, which really affected her art. All these strange things started happening after the Sheng Yun Art Exchange got involved. Good idea. I hear people talking. Okay, I'll use my terminal to record it, just in case. Oh, Mr. Beitzer stopped by again. Grumbling about the delay in getting Ming Yan's paintings to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. If Yin Feng hadn't pushed her, she wouldn't have gotten hurt. Now she can't even paint, and our order is gonna be late. Hey, watch yourself. I just did what I always do. She's been rebellious and a bit too smart for her own good lately. I just wanted her to keep her head down and work. Who knew she'd crack and cause that mess? Luckily, I slipped away, and the patrollers didn't suspect me. It's no big deal. I pinned it all on Ming Yan, so we're in the clear. Someone was here earlier asking about her case. No patrollers, but do you think they could find out what we did? Doubtful. They might notice we're making pigments here, but that's it. It doesn't matter if they find out. We pose as exiles. And what doesn't an exile do? But we should be careful. Remember what Mr. Beitzer warned us about. Keep these things on the down low. And if anyone finds out, they can't be allowed to trace it back to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. So the Shen Yuan Art Exchange has been involved in Ming Yan's case right from the start. No wonder they got all shifty when we brought up Ming Yang earlier. Ying Feng. Yes! It was his signature on Mr. Shizong's transaction record. When I asked him about the incident, he put all the blame on Ming Yan, saying she had ulterior motives. The exiles we questioned during the day did the same, trying to divert attention and cover up their own involvement at the scene in the first place. These distractions led us to concentrate solely on Ming Yan, ignoring other possible angles. I have a theory but we need that batch of paintings they mentioned to test it. But there are so many more people in the camp now. How should we get in? Okay. This should do the trick. Now, let's see what information we can find inside the camp. Ugh. 
Never thought I'd get worn out from something this light. Wow. Thanks. I'll go take a breather then. Right, the rest of the supplies are in the northern warehouse. the number of painters involved. They know where they all live, too. These addresses are not too far from each other, so the art exchange must be managing its network by districts. This camp is likely the hub for this district, handling transportation and supplies. Judging from the list, it looks like they're still searching for artists to create forgeries. are all fakes. I don't remember the real ones circulating the market. How has this managed to be kept from the public for so long? They risk being exposed if they transport through ports, not to mention the threats from the Shanyun Art Exchange. We should look for more clues. talk yesterday, boss. She's still holding her cards close. Keep an eye on her for now. If she tries anything, take her out. Understood. be the warehouse they were talking about. There's still some leftover ink lying around. They're all from the list. This batch is all Serenity of Shehua Village. Ming Yang's work. These aren't just simple copies anymore. It's obvious now. She was working with them to create forgeries for her own gain. In the end, this is the path she chose. I, I suspected as much, though I couldn't quite... I mean, I wasn't sure until I saw the paintings myself. Wait, this painting? It's the Serenity of Xiehua Village original, not a copy. Shouldn't it be at the studio? Oh, I see it now. This was the painting they stole from the studio. These copies, they're almost identical to the original. But there are some details, subtle ones, that reflect the artist's quirks, not just their technique. 
the painter copied them well. But if you look closely, you'll find that the finishings are a bit, um, more rigid in some areas. Well, that's because I... No, no, I'm just catching my breath. But where did these tacit discords come from? Her emotions caused the painting's frequencies to fluctuate, attracting the monsters. But she's not even here. It's just, I'm not really sure why her mood is reacting to us. Maybe, could it be because I'm here? She did see what I could do with my resonance ability once. Ever since I saw her diary, I've been wondering. Maybe it was seeing my ability that inspired her to start creating those phantasms. Maybe that's why she began to lose herself in her art. It seems like all those accumulated emotions just... just burst out whenever we get close to her or one of her paintings. It's all my fault. But... More exiles from the art exchange. Watch out! Surrender I your stuff. Walk away after you destroyed our warehouse and interfered with our business? Business. You... Who exactly are you people? You don't look like you're patrollers. What do you want? If it's the paintings you're after, take as many as you want. We can always make new ones. Forcing people to make copies like a factory line? It's disrespecting the creator's dignity. Ah, uh, it's just a couple of stones and trees on a piece of paper for crying out loud. Even I could draw one with the flick of a wrist. Who cares if they're real or not? For the amount of paint and ink that goes into them, I'd even go so far as to say paying those painters 20 credits each is a ripoff. How could you measure the value of creation in such a way? Oh, so you're also here for the money. Look, name a figure. We'll pay double if it'll make you shut up. How does that sound? Take it and scram. That's not what I meant. Then what the hell do you want from me? I... I want to expose everything to the public! Aside from reporting you to the patrollers, I want to let the public know about all the forgery and smuggling you've been doing. The way you coerce the painters and, and put their lives at risk for profit? I'll expose it all. Is, is something wrong? I... I can't remain silent about this any longer. This is the only way more people can learn about the truth. You better think this through. 
The Shenyuan Art Exchange is not a group you want to cross. I never painted for the Art Exchange's approval. If no one else dares to speak up, then... Then I'll be the one to do it! First, we keep these guys on close watch. Then, we need to catch them off guard. And the best way to do that is... <laughs> well, that's quite the story. At best, this merely proves our involvement in the incident. Yet the real culprit remains unknown. Your accusations are groundless. Allow me to remind you. She was the one who created those paintings, insisted on selling them, and concocted the entire terrifying incident. Do you honestly believe her paintings would have earned a single penny without my intervention? No. Mr. Baizu, you're changing the subject. How ungrateful. She ensnared us in this debacle, and now you dare to lay the blame at our feet. But before we proceed, I wish to present this audio recording to the court. Oh, Mr. Baitsu stopped by again, grumbling about the delay in getting Ming Yan's paintings to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. If Yin Feng hadn't pushed her, she wouldn't have gotten hurt. Now she can't even paint. And our order is going to be late. She's been rebellious and a bit too smart for her own good lately. I just wanted her to keep her head down and work. Who knew she'd crack and cause that mess? Ningyan was initially only making copies. Everything changed after you stepped in. Trickery, misinformation, and later on even threats. She was led down the path of forging artworks for you. I do understand that if her own heart hadn't wavered, none of this would have happened. But there was already no turning back by the time she wanted to quit. So saying she was the mastermind behind it all, that's just not fair. Even so, how is forgery a valid accusation? Nothing like that was mentioned in your recording, now was it? This evidence clearly shows that these paintings are no ordinary copies, but your way of making a profit. <laughs> There's no such thing as real or fake paintings. You're not fooling anyone. For it to be forgery, there has to be another original artist. These paintings are all the work of Ming Yan. Even if she made dozens of identical copies, it wouldn't be considered forgery. Mr. Baitz, do you recognize this painting? <laughs> well, of course. It's Serenity of Shehua Village, the work of the arcane artist. Then can you tell the difference between this one and the others? Of course. This piece possesses a lifelike quality unmatched by any other, all thanks to the resonance ability of the arcane artist Ming Yan. However, judging from these paintings, it seems Ming Yang's ability never stabilized successfully. Except for this original piece. What does this have to do with anything? Do you have solid evidence to prove the differences between these paintings? What you're saying is all speculation. There's no guarantee a painter won't make mistakes, is there? Artists seeking perfection always choose the highest quality pigments for their most important pieces. During our investigation of the studio, I accidentally got paint on me and discovered something interesting about the materials used in these paintings. The original paintings had pigments that were pure and brighter, able to blend more naturally and retain color for longer. In contrast, the forgeries used pigments made from mineral scraps. These don't hold up the same, smudging at the slightest touch. 
we can distinguish the real paintings from the fakes simply by analyzing the ink used. Doing so only proves the so-called original painting is created differently from the others. Are you implying that Ming Yan is only allowed to use a single kind of pigment throughout her work? How is this supposed to prove that we are behind the forgeries? <sighs> because the original creator of Serenity and Shehua Village is me. When I was a child, painting was the only way I could express myself freely. Everything I did and didn't understand, it all flowed through the tip of my paintbrush. All that I saw lived within my paintings. Whatever I thought, I painted into reality. This power to turn fantasies into reality gradually caught the interest of many. Tales of the arcane artist spread far and wide. I took great joy in my skills improving. However, I discovered to my dismay that my parents were using my creations to turn a quick profit. They were sold at unbelievable prices. Some sought beauty in enchanted worlds, using the paintings as a distraction from reality. Others resorted to hellish nightmares to inflict torment upon those they desire. My own abilities had led my feelings astray. They were being exploited, and everything was spiraling out of control. After I realized this, I began to fear holding a brush. I tried to paint without relying on my abilities, but my parents scolded me for it. They called anything painted without using my abilities worthless. After the family business fell apart, my parents vanished without a trace. They may have left behind a considerable mess, but freedom has also been returned to my brush. Xiehua Village was my first stop upon arriving in Jinzhou alone. Waters and mountains rest by the pain. Valleys and peaks in the dream remain. Colors of vanity washed away. The painted world fades, forgotten today. A poem I wrote, inscribed on serenity in Xiehua Village. I know it's not that well written, but it's proof of my decision to stop everything I was doing. And that painting, well, it became the arcane artist's final piece of art. Ever since that day, Paintings with special abilities gradually faded from everyone's minds. And... I never used my abilities to paint again. Well, that was certainly a touching story. But I'm afraid your words alone won't be enough to prove you created this painting. Madame Juyao? To prove my statement, I request your permission to use and paint with one of these copies. Granted. Yes, Ming Yang's experience has made me realize something. To create art that truly resonates, I must first accept myself. The paintings I drew in the past, they were heartfelt creations, pieces of my life. They formed my past and shaped who I am today. It's not just about proving a single painting. It's about so much more. If my forte is the cause behind all this, then I must take responsibility. I can't just let this go on and hurt others. Uh, I mean, it's 
the world inside this painting so distorted. Spectacle is born from the mind. This place must be a manifestation of Ming Yang's mind when she created it. What? Wait, did you hear something? <sighs> Jojo? I painted it exactly like hers. <sighs> that voice. Why is everyone still praising her work? It's all right. It's okay. She's gone. I'll be an even better painter than she ever was! Watch out! your abilities. My abilities have nothing to do with it. You created masterpieces I wish came from me. Bold. Free. I know our paintings have their differences, but the heart and soul we put into them are the same. When I learned the truth, I was heartbroken. 
I believed that by sealing my forte, no one would get hurt because of my paintings. I never expected them to continue causing harm after all these years. But Rover's words made me realize something. It was never about the paintings themselves, but rather those who sought to use them to hurt others. Mr. Baitsu, you run a highly esteemed calligraphy and painting institution, yet you've suppressed the creative spirit and violated these artists' dignity, all for the sake of wealth. Everything they cherished has now become a tool for profit. The works they held dear are just tools for your gain, insulting to both the original artists and their imitators. Set before you is the original painting from many years ago and the one I've just completed. Now, everything has been brought to light. We received word from the Public Security Bureau 10 minutes ago that they have taken the exiles into custody and found the location where the paintings were hidden. Mr. Beitze, do you have anything else to add to your defense? Very well. We will reevaluate Mingyan's charges, determine the Shangyun Art Exchange's involvement in the incident, and conduct a comprehensive investigation as soon as possible. This hearing is adjourned. It's finally over. I didn't miss anything important, did I? Huh? No, not at all. I was just coming up with things to say as I went. My palms were sweating the whole time. I definitely couldn't have done it if you weren't there with me. Thinking about the feeling when we were investigating the case together is what kept me calm during the trial. What I meant to say is, back then, everything I said felt right. Like, I could just be myself around you. It felt so good to be that relaxed. Thank you for helping me through this. You... You helped me find the courage to believe in myself. Thanks to you, look at everything we accomplished. The Shengyun Art Exchange is undergoing investigation. It'll be the end of their businesses. And the painters they coerced are finally set free. Thank you. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. I want to pay Mingyang a visit. After all, she was involved in all of this, and I want to tell her everything. What do you think? My commission started with her. Plus, you and I solved the case together. Why don't you come with me? Is the commission over? Yes. I already had it taken care of the day we found out the truth. All right, let's go. Jaja? It's been a while. Your injuries... <laughs> the researchers have taken good care of me. A chat won't hurt. And you must be the rover. 
I heard about everything you did. Thank you for freeing me from those nightmares. You know what, Judge? You may seem soft and gentle on the outside, but if your boundaries are crossed, I think you can be tougher than anyone else. And I still owe you an apology. Forgive me, because I was so obsessed with wanting to be you, to be better than you. I've caused you so much trouble. The pain of these injuries managed to put a stop to my obsession with imitating your paintings. <laughs> Maybe I was never meant to be a painter to begin with. I brought you a gift. <laughs> See? Only you can create a painting with such life. I still have a long way to go. This is your painting. It's the one you gave me when we first met. I... <laughs> How ironic. I've been trying to imitate you for so many years that now I can't even tell my own paintings apart anymore. Your paintings were never inferior to mine. Just look at this piece. Even you approve of its value. It doesn't matter who painted it. Mingyang, I hope you can find your true self, whoever she is. I know you can do it. Thank you for bringing me this painting. Really. I think it's safe to say she'll give it some thought. During the few times we met, she was always passionate about discussing art with me. I think that fire inside her won't just fade away. Come to think of it, the deep discussions we had and the painting duels back then felt like true friendship. So, seeing her in so much pain, I just had to help. I don't want Mingyang to lose hope and have someone who loves painting so much just disappear. To be honest, I didn't just see this case through to correct mistakes or help the artists. Deep down, I... I didn't want to let you down. I wanted to tell you this back at the mine, but the words just didn't come out right. Thank you for being my friend and helping me through all of this, Rover. While I have yet to uncover my past and who I am, every moment with you is a new and special memory. Thank you for your help, Jija. This experience has helped me understand you and the world a little better. You seem to be pretty slow on the news. <laughs> You've given me the courage to joke around. Hmm. Well. Let's take it slow for now. <laughs> <laughs>